In Florida, a mother of five killed her ex's new girlfriend in a Walgreens parking lot. We have all the details on that. In Utah, a woman who had too many beers attempts to kidnap an infant and... I need your lead story. (laughs) I'm going to let Mike say his lead story. We'll leave this in. What's your lead story, Mike? Hollywood star attacked by bikers on New Year's Eve. There you go. These stories and more coming at you today, Friday, January 5th on Real Life, Real Crime Daily. And I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Overton. And I'm Mike Agavino. January 5th. You know what today is? What? Today is the one-year anniversary of Taco Vigilante taking matters into his own hands in the Houston Taqueria. I was going to see if you said it correctly this time. I got I got uh, some good coaching. I got some good coaching from uh, Margie Akers, who also let me know and sent me the article that the grand jury returned a no bill in the case, so they are not going to try hey, taco, taco. And he is, got away. He is a free man. Interesting good for him. Well, that's a year gone by, boys. And girls and listeners, lifers, we love it. Appreciate each and every one of y'all. Let's get down to some crime time for Friday. First time this year. All right. And a Florida woman is behind bars after a planned child custody exchange in front of a drugstore left her baby's father injured and another woman shot dead. Mm. This occurred on Christmas Day. Amanda Jansen, 38, stands accused of two counts of premeditated murder in the first degree and five counts of child neglect. The second murder charge leveled against the defendant is for attempted murder, though uh, the associated statute listed in her jail record is the same. Jansen and the male victim share an 11-month-old child. On December 20th, a family court ordered the defendant and the child's father to split custody right down the middle. Under the terms of that agreement, Jansen was to turn the infant over in front of a Walgreens in Gainesville, Florida at 2 p.m. on uh, the 25th of December. On the day in question, Jansen drove to the pharmacy with all five of her children in the vehicle. Before they arrived, however, Jansen allegedly gave her oldest son her SNAP benefits card, debit card, and instructions on how to pay the cellular bill. The boy said he had never done this before. Jansen arrived first, and while sitting in the driver's seat of the vehicle, pulled out a gun, cocked it, and waited. When the couple arrived, the 11-month-old's father got out of the front passenger seat of his girlfriend's vehicle. Then Jansen got out of her own vehicle and with the gun hidden behind her back, walked up to the other woman who was still in the driver's seat. Then she fires three shots and kills the female victim. After that, Jansen went around to the victim went around to the back of the victim's car searching for the child's father, who had since jumped back into the front passenger seat. Hmm. That man was shot three times as well. Did they kill him? Uh no, he he was not killed. You made this happen, Jansen shouted as she fired at the father in front of the 11-month-old. A nearby police officer hears the gunshots. He rushes over to inspect what occurred at the Walgreens parking lot and watch the defendant's car flee the scene. The officer began telling the vehicle, uh, tailing the vehicle, and soon several other members of law enforcement were in pursuit of Jansen for some 13 miles. Wow. Now, that's with five kids in the right. car. Right. Meanwhile, Jansen herself calls 911 and admits to the shooting, telling the dispatcher that she was being followed by the police. All five children were still in the car. They were shouting. They were pleading with her to stop, obviously, pull over uh, as she leads the officers on chases. And they had speeds of over 100 miles an hour during this chase with with all five. I mean, she she just shot. Two people in front of another kid. That's right. So the vehicle eventually comes to a final stop, and she discarded the loaded firearm from the vehicle. So she throws the the gun out. Officers Uh. located two additional loaded magazines on her person. So she was coming to play, you know. 
the murder was captured on surveillance video. So they've got all the evidence they need. Post Miranda warning, uh, she stated that law enforcement already knew what happened. Jansen had a short but not recent criminal history that dated back nearly two decades, and she is currently being detained on a $2 million bond and has been assigned a public defender. Wow. Wow. That is one hell of a story. That is. uh, God, those poor five kids. Right. And and well, premeditated as it can get. Yeah, yeah. You can I mean, you're telling, you're handing your oldest your SNAP benefits card and right. tell them how to pay their exactly. sale bill. Yeah, yeah. Just how you pay your sale bill. That's crazy, mama's gonna, man. Mama's going to prison for the rest of her life. Yeah, yeah. I don't, man. I don't get it. Uh, Hundred miles an hour uh, with car all chase. the other five kids in the car. Yeah. Hopefully, they all have that same baby's daddy, and they get you know he he lives and. I don't know shit. Shot them both three times, so she was trying to kill both of them. Yeah. Well, Wasn't no doubt came, about it. She came with a plan. Yeah, yeah. And you, you said about the bail and all that. Now, look, I don't know if I ever told y'all this, but courtrooms, besides working in the uniform patrol and and being on the SWAT team, courtrooms are some of the most entertaining places you can ever be, and uh, you just never know what's going to happen. And I'll tell you this. Uh, a lot of the judges I work with, I know they carry pistols under their robes, whether it's on the ankle holster or whatever. Really? Yep. And and because they know it's it, it's craziness, right? So let's go to Nevada. Let me tell you what happened, and we'll put the video of this um, on the Facebook page. So a Nevada judge was attacked in court by a defendant who vaulted the bench. And, y'all, you got to see this video. This dude's like <laughs> – Superman Olympic flag. caliber yeah, yeah, leaper. Just, I mean, the bench is higher up and he just, you know, it's, it's amazing. So who vaulted the bench and sparked a bloody brawl with court officials and attorneys as he was about to be sentenced to prison in a felony battery case. Well, that fits right. The, um, <laughs> so he, he jumps over the, uh, he leaped over the defense table and then the judge's bench and landed atop her and uh, sparked the bloody, bloody brawl. Uh, um, and the violence seems captured on courtroom video. And Clark County District Judge Mary Kay Holthus fell back from her seat against the wall and suffered some injuries but was not hospitalized. A courtroom marshal, who was also uh, injured as he came to the judge's aid and was hospitalized for treatment of a bleeding gash on his forehead and a dislocated shoulder. Ooh. This according to officials and witnesses. And the attack occurred around 11 a.m. at the Regional Justice Center in Las Vegas. The defendant, Deborah Delone Redden, 30, was wrestled to the floor behind the judge's bench by several court and jail officers and courtroom staff members, including some who were seen throwing punches. He was he, – that name may have been misleading. It definitely was a guy, y'all. He was His arre- name was Deborah. Yeah. He was arrested. Maybe that's why he's mad. He was arrested and jail- <laughs> jailed at the Clark County Detention Center where records showed he faces multiple new felony charges, including battery on a protected person, referring to the judge and the court officers. And they said, it happened so fast, it was hard to know what to do, said Richard Scow, the chief county district attorney who prosecuted Redden on the – a case that stemmed from an arrest last year on allegations of Redden attacked a person with a baseball bat. Now, Redden's defense attorney, Cesar Almas, did not respond uh, to, you know, to the reporters seeking comment. Redden was not in custody when he arrived at court Wednesday, and he wore a white shirt and dark pants as he stood, stood next to his attorney, and he asked the judge for leniency. While describe himself as a person who never stops trying to do the right thing, no matter how hard it is. <laughs> I'm not a rebellious person, he told nah, the judge, l- later adding that he doesn't think he should be sent to prison. But if it's appropriate for you, then you have to do what you have to do. Well, as the judge made it clear, she intended to put him behind bars, and the court martial moved to handcuff him, read and yelled uh, curse words, and charged forward. And amid screams from the people who had been sitting with Redden in the courtroom's audience. Anyway, y'all, the, the, uh, the, it's just craziness, right? You never know what you're going to see in a courtroom. And when, thanks, Leah Marie, for sending that in last night. Uh, I really got a kick out of the video. I mean, not that the judge and them got it's beat up. Yeah, but it's, the, it's, I mean, it's just, 
You His name it. was Deborah. Deborah, right? I but, mean, there's some but, names that can go it. both ways, but hey, Deborah ain't hey, one. Your Honor, give him some leniency. I'm not a bad person. Okay, yeah, Mama, just, Mama you're, named you're me Deborah. Would prison, you expect me to do? You go ahead and do what you got to do, bitch. That's well, the most the, insane. The good news is uh, Antonio Pierce, the coach of the uh, yeah. Vegas Raiders, offered right. the guy a contract yeah, right. last yeah, night yeah, yeah. after watching him take that yeah, lead. He, he may bail him out in a couple of years. Uh, anyway, that's a, interesting. I've never seen anyone. He had to jump the defense table and then, then jump. I mean, and he's just. I would love to see the be- female though. Oh, I yeah, mean, yeah, that's, and, that's, and, that's, yeah, he beat her ass, and then, and yeah, then the the marshals and everybody else jumping, kind of, and the punches yeah. being thrown. Yeah, I would love to see crazy. the before or after. Like, how how many shots did he get oh, in? Yeah. On, he, uh, he got everybody. he got in enough to go to prison for a long time. Oh, oh. he's screwed now. And yeah, anybody take goes before the next judge. I guarantee you, he got his ass whipped when yeah. he got oh, in the back yeah. of that court. Oh, yeah, they, I'm sure he they didn't say, but he has tied him to a pole. Yeah, he had to get some medical attention. Yeah. Mm. Scraped him on every bar. Yeah, Hit that yeah, head on every bar. Yeah, every drag cell him bar. down and make it real. Yeah. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered... A super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdown scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And calming like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday host and hostess gift to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Hey, ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes. Your body goes through premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have hormone harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of hormone harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. 
That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. Well, boys, let's go to Hollywood. Hollywood. And in a year, 2023, where we lost the likes of national treasures like Suzanne Summers, Matthew Perry. Tragedy. Raquel Welch. Tragedy. Harry Belafonte. Alan Arkin. Belafonte. Jimmy Buffett. Burt Backrack. It's Jim Buffett tragedy. And yeah. All of these are tragedies. And Tony Bennett, just to name a few. We almost lost another icon on New Year's Eve. We almost lost uh, Ian Ziering. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure he's an icon in somebody's world, but not mine. No, neither are you. I figured you. I, know no, I know Jim was all over Ian Ziering, mostly because of his uh, wife, Shannon his, ex, Darty. his ex-wife. Yeah. But, Shannon Darty. Well, Sh- Sharknado. <laughs> they had a, 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 a slot machine. In the Beau Rivage of Sharknado. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I didn't even know about I mean, I know him from Beverly Hills 90210. Yeah, yeah, I never watched Sharknado either, to be honest well, with you. There's like seven of them. You've never seen any of them? Uh-uh. Oh, they're, they're hysterical. Got better things to do with my time. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you watch anything, like any of breathe. Ian's work, you have to watch this video of this incident. So he's attacked on New Year's Eve by a, quote, biker gang in Los Angeles in a road rage incident that nearly turned tragic for the acclaimed Sharknado and Beverly Hills 90210 leading man. Ziering broke his silence about the incident on Monday. Ziering, who's 59 now, said in a video posted to his Instagram that he was grateful that he and his daughter Mia, she was in the car with him, Mia's 12, were unheard in the altercation. He captioned the post with this message. Yesterday, I experienced an alarming incident involving a group of individuals on motorcycles. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, let's just Moping let's out. revise that and just call them mini bikes. Uh, while stuck in traffic, my car was approached aggressively by one of these riders, leading to an unsettling confrontation. In an attempt to assess any damage, I exited my car. This action unfortunately escalated into a physical altercation which I navigated to protect myself. The former Sharknado hero went on to say that he was, quote, relieved to report that my daughter and I are both completely unscathed, but added that the incident had left him, quote, deeply concerned about the growing boldness of such groups who disrupt public safety and peace. Um, he went on to say a whole bunch more, but his, uh, his former partner on 90210, Brian Austin Green, another favorite of Jim's took to Instagram no. to I didn't defend. Like I don't know who he is. He wore an <laughs> earring. I didn't dig it. So, yeah. Took to Instagram to uh, support his former castmate. He said in praise of Zeering that the actor, quote, did his thing and fought off the bikers. My boy Ian Zeering got into a <laughs> got into a fist fight on a Hollywood oh boy, Boulevard. Ian. Wait, wait. My boy Ian Zeering got into a fist fight on a Hollywood Boulevard with like five dudes and fucking like beat them. Did it? Did his thing? He's a monster. He's fucking incredibly fit. It's obviously, Z, I love you, brother. You're a beast. Okay. So the reporting on this thing makes it sound like he clashed with like you know the sons of anarchy right, or right, hell's angels. Right. Um, these weren't motorcycles. They were like motorized bikes or electric bikes or whatever. And the people that got out to fight him were either kids or they were little bikes, people what? or they were Ruckus. like, you know, former cast members of The Wizard of Oz. I mean, I was it, say, it was but the munchkins. This you know. was uh, this was not a life threatening situation. This yeah. was not like heroic yeah. conduct on his uh well they could well he had part, his daughter with him. Yeah they well, could have all been he's pack- protected. I mean all been packing Uzis, that's right. I, I'm gonna cut him a Switch little slack blades. because his daughter was with him and this, you know, gang of whatever's you know, they uh, coin boys. Uh, I, well, I, I, yeah, it's funny. I, wrote, I wrote this gang of whatevers who could get destroyed in a rumble with the coin boys. Yeah. That's exactly what I wrote. Did aggressively go after him. But, you know, he uh, but we can probably cool off on the Hollywood tough guy reporting on this thing. They would have never tried that anyway, with Luke Perry. Well, uh, we'll, right. gonna say. we'll post this. Uh, you ever see eight, eight seconds? Yeah, uh, that's one of my favorites. We'll, we'll post a video of this rumble on Hollywood Boulevard. There you go. And, there you know, mean. almost. Certainly insurers will get Sharknado 8 this yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They might be up to 12 by now. They'd have never tried that with Luke Perry. If he yeah. got rest his soul. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Salt Lake City. They got problems oh, at the Salt Lake City Police Department. What do you really? 
and you're gonna you're gonna be when I, uh, when I lived there, it was one of the coolest. Be places. able to relate to this story. All right. So inspectors have told Salt Lake City Police Chief that the department was unable to locate. 2,316 pieces of evidence, oh, including firearms, drugs, cash, yes. and jewelry. Another 7,500 items were marked as as out for forensic testing, which, in fact, right. they're believed to be somewhere in the evidence storage. The smaller group of missing items, too, were thought to be somewhere in storage or the items have been destroyed as part of a standard purging, but they can't locate them. Mm-hmm. There's no indication that any of these items are out in the public. Uh, that from the sheriff. And he said, you know, sometimes this happens. Yeah. Uh, it's human error. When somebody goes to scan an item to the wrong box or they scan a barcode on an evidence tag, it doesn't scan properly. And maybe they just kind of put it in there anyway. Uh, the inspectors, though, contend this problem went beyond whether the evidence is accounted for. Now, this is important on a lot of levels because you you could possibly have guns out there that, mm-hmm. you know, narcotics. Uh, narcotics and those sorts of things. So five years after a 2018 audit, this this has come out. And in 2018, they had this same problem. Aud- auditors uh, went and audited uh, their department and found all this missing evidence. So the, uh, the real problem is, um, and I've seen this happen. They, they, they say it's sent to the crime lab or whatever, and, and it never comes back. And, and the ADAs ultimately end up dropping the cases. That, that's right. And, and, uh, another problem is Salt Lake city is a huge area uh, and they are keeping honestly too much evidence. So you're supposed to purge this evidence after so much time. Right. Apparently, they have not been doing that. They actually had drug paraphernalia dating back to 1997. Wow, that's the way 1997. So it's just stacking up and yeah. stacking up. So it's not only drug paraphernalia, it would have been um, illegal firearms. I'm, illegal I'm sure narcotics and all that that they have to destroy at a certain time. So the you know as you just mentioned it's it's a huge issue not only with Salt Lake City and we're not picking on Salt Lake City here right. there are many departments in the country that have it and what really makes it unsuccess- unacceptable uh, by any standard is that they have technology out there that could absolutely alleviate this problem in, I, including our guy from Denham Springs. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Okay. There's a there's a company here in Louisiana I actually did a podcast with on local and leaders I, called Patrax. Yes. Well, they I, have I, a technology called Patrax. And, and, CNA Associates. And I did Shout out. on the original Real Life Real Crime, I, I did um, a mini series and in, in talking about how I had to work these evidence cases, et cetera. And then I had uh, Patrax come in and, and be on the episode with me and explain the system and the technology. So here's the here's the question. Uh, you know, back in the day when you were in law enforcement, if you had a piece of evidence, just take me through what you did with that after let's, you let's say picked I it pull up. you over and, and you, you got meth on you, right? Mm-hmm. And then I get out my NIK uh, test kit, test it, break the three ampules, shake it, it turns blue. That's a field test kit, right? Right. And then, the, the, um, the, then you take an evidence envelope, you put the meth in it, and you, you seal it. Now, you had seal with evidence tape on all corners mm-hmm. and initials on the corner, so you know, couldn't tell it was broken. And on the front was the evidence sticker, what where it was seized, time and date, offense, et cetera, um, what it's suspected to be or what it is. And the, then you have this. Big ass. Back then, I'm sure some computers now was like a triplicate form of a, of evidence sheet that mm-hmm. you had to do, and you had to turn it all in. To it, it, if it was a nighttime it, downstairs, they had like a, a mailbox that you could open and, and put it in. Other than that, you turn it into the evidence officer during the daytime, and then that basically gets filed or yes, whatever and, put and, in and the box. What's, what's so important about that is this chain of custody. And if that's broken, then then a defense Man. attorney is going to have it thrown out. That's and then, right. And then the evidence officer takes it and logs it in. And if it's, it, let's say it's a firearm and needs to be stored for a murder trial, they'll put it in a, in, a, in the vault, right? Yep. Uh, if it's something that needs to be sent to the crime lab, they'll send it out and have it tested uh, and or, or the or the sample of it. And then it comes back and they'll hold it to the trial and then it all gets destroyed afterwards. Well, that in 
that is the old way of doing it. Right. Now with technology, they have RFID right, right, uh, right. technology right. that actually tracks this in real time. Yeah. So it it knows exactly where that evidence is at all times. And who, who has it? it in, yes, has, and that's what, where, where Pad Tracks is, is. And I'm a huge fan of theirs. Uh, but they came up with this technology. Yeah, and, they're in all and three patents in all the uh, biggest departments. But the problem is getting old school departments to swap over to the new technology. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, it's like because anything of else. Because the you cost or just because just, of resistance it's, it's to it's having like to resistance change. To change and resistance change. to change. Because the cost isn't it. that much. You, what Patrax does, is that they save you so much money and time and effort. It, think about the amount of man hours just looking for shit. And I've had I've had to go in an evidence locker and, and dig for hours and hours and hours to find really? shit for a case. Yeah, and and they can tell you exactly where it is, what corner of the warehouse, what what down to the yeah, yeah. centimeter. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's a, it, it really is amazing, but it, it's mind boggling to me in a situation like Salt Lake City. Yeah, that problem is gone yeah there yeah. you don't have that problem anymore yeah, but unfortunately a lot of times it worked and i won't name names but the uh i had to test the whole police department one time on the polygraph and i find out who did it and it was, it was assistant chief they he, I mean, he was really to pain pills he would go in once somebody sees some he would slip the bottom of the evidence envelope he's the only one him and the one other person had the key to the room and he would take it out, and you couldn't even tell. And then he was also like slash evidence officer, and he wouldn't send it in. It would say you send it in, and then it no, just buy it in time. Yeah, kind of, kind of like a pyramid scheme. And that's not like a rotation you do. The officer that's well, it depends on the size of the department. This department was a small department, and and okay, so it could be. the um the, the but stars. like Salt Lake City, they uh, have they, they got. They probably they got, probably have an evidence room probably with have, twelve they probably officers have, in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Fifteen, twenty officers yeah. work at And it. that's their only job that's it. is that's that's it. checking that's in it. evidence. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Well, and you would think these days uh they need to keep that stuff longer because the right, advancements going on with DNA and everything yeah. else, they, yeah. they need to retain it. So. Shout out to Pad Trax and Matt Moss. Uh, hello. Um uh, hadn't seen you in a while, Matt. I hope you're doing well. All right. The let's go. To Utah again? Oh no! You got to be right? kidding. My next story is Utah too. Well, yeah, We're going day, Utah, Utah, the Utah. The other day, uh, I was listening to an okay. update episode on the way in. Utah we got did, it going on we, today. We, we did three suicide stories in yeah. a row. Yeah, uh, just the way it falls, y'all. We don't. We never had three Utah. I mean, three Floridas, yeah, uh, three Texas, yeah, but right. three Utahs. So right. Utah trends that into wow. And then Utah. Now look, when I lived in Salt Lake City, um, they didn't have bar rooms, but they had like what they call clubs. clubs. And you had to pay a fee to get in. And then, like, their shots, ours were one and a half ounces. Ours were an ounce. If you wanted to buy alcohol, you had to go to a state-run alcohol store. But then this lady, I don't know what she's doing. But an intoxicated woman in Utah attempted to kidnap a one-year-old child while Jesus. holding a kitchen knife. Uh, Ambry Lynn Welch, 35, was arrested on Sunday after the Ogden. And I lived in Ogden, the Air Force Base there. Police department now where respond. Weber State is. Yep. Uh, 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 police department responded to the service call in which they were told multiple people were arguing on the street. Upon arriving at the scene in Ogden, the city located about 40 miles north of Salt Lake City, Welch told officers she had drank many beers. She also <laughs> had slurred speech and was carrying a beer can and a 10 inch silver kitchen knife. Welch's dog was also unleashed and loose on the street. Witnesses told officials that Welch opened the rear door of a stranger's car with a knife in hand and began unbuckling the woman's child from the, his car seat while the mother was in the driver's seat. The mom and the toddler were apparently trying to leave a family party. Police arrived on the scene and were successful in getting Welch to drop the knife and back away from the child in the vehicle. And according to the affidavit, the child's mom feared serious harm or death would come to herself or her child since Welch had a knife in her hand and she unbuckled the child. The victims did not know Welch, and she reportedly refused to provide breath and blood samples. And the police said, thankfully, nobody was injured during the incident, and Welch was booked um, on felony count of aggravated kidnapping and some misdemeanor charges. The, uh, it's crazy, right? 
Just Nightmare, walk up, honestly, and drank getting ready many to leave. Beers, getting ready to leave, and somebody opens your car, kid's car door, and takes Jesus them out to see. Now, lawyers what advise you to like not talk to the police, but I mean, if they're going to advise you when you do talk, they probably would say, "Don't start with I drank many yeah, beers yeah, and and drop the knife and drop the knife, and yeah. kick it on the car or something." Wow. Well, you are in trouble. What's going on? I think in Utah, Utah is the only state that has the firing squad still left, or it's an option. It's an option. Yeah, it's an option. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, you have an option of that or lethal injection. I think. But then, I mean, she's not going to get it for this charge. No, no. I always want to see a fire. Squad. Is stabbing by kitchen well, knife, and all, it's not one of the options. Yeah, they should. Brian Koberger might see it. No, you saw it. Yeah. That, no, he was in. Oh, um, he's in Idaho, uh, but they Idaho. also have that option. Okay. Yeah. All right. God, I, I I listened to a uh, special that Megyn Kelly did over the the holiday on the Koberger case, and it's so depressing because, I mean, the, the presentation that she gave and the people she interviewed was like, he's got a good chance of getting off. I'm like, you got to be yeah, kidding whatever. me. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to yeah. Megyn Kelly, the beautiful. Man, yeah. Kelly. But then she used to be on Fox and Friends in the morning. Yep, she many years did ago. used to be. Yeah, she was hot. <laughs> 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 Megan's still hot. Yeah. All right, let's stay in Utah for another bizarro. Um, a 17 year old Chinese exchange student was found safe after what appeared to be a cyber kidnapping attempt. Kai Zhang is an exchange student living in Riverdale, Utah. He was reported missing by his high school on Thursday. The Riverdale Police Department believed the teen was a victim of a cyber kidnapping. Uh, his host family was reportedly unaware that he was missing. As they told police, he had slept in his bed on Wednesday night and they heard him in his room on Thursday morning. Zhang was found in a tent in the mountains on Sunday Hours after police had begun to search for him, authorities said he was, quote, alive, but very cold and scared. And he had, quote, no heat source in the tent, only a heat blanket, limited food and water. I've got a picture we'll post of this tent this, this kid was in. But he was allegedly a victim of a cyber kidnapping scheme that the FBI told police was happening across the U.S. where Chinese exchange students are targeted online and their families are threatened by scammers. His family, meaning his family back in China, received a ransom uh, note along with a photo of Zhang on Thursday. This is according to the police that stated he had been kidnapped. And the note prompted the family to pay $80,000 to the kidnappers or they'd never see him again. When he was found in the mountains on Sunday, police found several phones in his makeshift tent, which authorities said were used to take photos that were sent to his family in China. He was cleared of any kind of medical concerns and uh, was able to make contact with his family. His family did pay the $80,000. Uh, uh, his first request was for a warm cheeseburger, so I guess he was okay. Um, uh, just a bizarre story. So, he, And he had previously attempted to go camping in compliance with the alleged cyber kidnappers on December 20th, but he was stopped by local police in Provo who returned him to his host family. So they had just broken up an attempt to pull this off. I don't get it. Like 10 days earlier, and then it happened again. So He might be involved. Scratching head. First, yeah. I mean, you're 17 years old, and you found in a tent alone. And the host why, family why seems to not yeah. know. How can your host family not know uh, I don't you're know missing? About, I don't know about that part, but the, uh, I know if I'm 17 years old, I was strong like bull. And unless you had a gun to my head and you leave me in a tent, I'm getting the fuck out. Well, they took him. The tent was in the mountains, so they took well, him. Fuck it. I mean, he got up the mountain. <laughs> he can get down the yeah, mountain, right? I mean, he well, he might have got up the mountain in <laughs> snowmobiles or a a, yeah. a caterpillar or something like that. The I don't, I don't know. The, the I don't know. But it, 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 I, it, it does feel like there's something big <laughs> yeah, missing something here. in he the story. He might have got a cut uh, from one of his Chinese partners. Give us, Jim, give us an accent. <laughs> not accent, uh, um, language. You know, when it comes to uh, to that story, I feel like a dance is what wolves kind of say. Tatonka. 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 Buff. 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 Bu
Yeah. That was a great movie. That was a great movie. One of the one, only ones that I Shout turned out around Kevin, and walked Early back Kevin back Costner. Yeah. And I read the book. The book was really great, too. Did you? Mm-hmm. I bet the book was 9,000 pages. It was. It, was awesome. it had to be. Yeah. Awesome. Dances with Wolves. Great movie. Hey, y'all. Let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble Meal Kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, ciapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something. All the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now they're all for my listeners a fantastic limited time deal you get a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin-baked, and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. Shop early, save big, all month long during Black Friday buildup at Lowe's. Right now, get select pre-lit artificial Christmas trees starting at just $59.98. Don't wait to save. Shop these deals today, in-store or online. Because Lowe's knows deals. Discount taken at time of purchase. While supplies last. Selection varies by location. Mile high mile crime. High Look, crime time. Of all the mile high crimes that we've given you over the the past year, this may be the craziest one we've ever given you. No yeah. way! Come on, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, it's we'll up there on the list. You ready for this one? A 30 year old man has died after crawling inside a plane's engine intake at the Salt Lake City Airport. We're back in Utah. Back to Utah. Boy, Utah is yeah. a that is a record of any anywhere. A store manager in a secure part of the airport notified police that someone went through an emergency exit following a disturbance at 9.52 p.m. This happened on January 1st. Mm -hmm. Officers and airport workers, they began searching the areas of the airport for the man uh, that the man could have accessed, including an aircraft de-icing pad. At 10.10 p.m., they find the man unconscious inside a wing-mounted engine of of an airliner on the pad. Mm -hmm. He appeared to have crawled in through an intake cowling. The engines of the occupied commercial plane were rotating at the time. Wow. Maybe when we crawled in there, it'd get warm. Emergency crews tried to revive the man and remove him from the engine, but he died at the scene. On Tuesday, January 2nd, police identified him as Kyler Effinger of Park City, Utah. He was ticketed, was a ticketed passenger with a boarding pass for a Denver bound flight. His cause of death remains under investigation, and the airliner, which was bound for San Francisco, was evacuated. Airport of, uh, officials said that the it was a twin-engine Airbus A220, uh, and it was bound for San Francisco, but it was canceled. Wait, wait, wait. but he had a boarding pass to Denver. Mm-hmm. But he was that wasn't the plane he was crawling in. So he had a ticket to be on a flight going to another destination mm-hmm. in a seat. But somehow ends up in the engine. engine 
the oh, engine the intake flight. as it's the it's, as it's freaking right I, I don't yeah i hate that anyone gets killed or whatever but if you climb inside a jet yeah i'm thinking that's engine, not a good go idea fuck, go fuck yourself uh, the, i mean yeah you got exactly what you have coming to you what would possess you to do it i don't know no, oh well. I, what world do know. you live in that that is a good idea? I don't know. We'll wait for the toxicology to come back on that genius. Yeah, yeah. Mo- I think maybe, there's maybe so. Kind of conspiracy going on in the state of Utah, right. where there are all of these bizarre crimes in a short window of. Oh, uh, we just of t- broke I mean, a record and did four Utah stories in a row. And I have another one. Do you? Well, I'm not doing it. Going to do it in uh, this episode, but and it, but it's bizarre. Well, if you're kinky crimes in Utah, it's definitely going to be bizarre. I don't know if they have kinky They're not allowed to have in kink in Utah, are they? They're pretty kinky uh, in Utah. Special they got like nine wives, some of them. Kink in Shout out to our Utah friends. Right, we, we love them. Speaking uh, of kink, have you gotten together with your new friend yet? Uh, the, the, the board is sanctioning Well, the board's sanctioning me. I understand yeah. that, and I'm going to accept my punishment, but that doesn't mean uh, that. that the, it's a trophy case. Where for all my friends, so Take a video of the trophy case. In case anybody comes to hit real life, real crime headquarters <laughs> and is lonely, it's a, it's in the trophy case. Did your dad see that? Have you showed you? No, I haven't seen my dad. He hadn't been there. So I right, played. Right, right, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Kinky <laughs> crimes. And uh, well, we're just talking about kinky, but kinky crimes for Friday, y'all. And listen to this one. Kind of along the same uh, thing as Mike's GIF. Um, after being uh, derided as a limp dick in need of Viagra, an ex-con retrieved a pink dildo from a bedroom shelf and battered a female acquaintance with the sex toy. <laughs> there you go. Investigators charged that Stephen Nerdin, 38, attacked the woman during a 1.20 a.m. confrontation Monday at a, at a residence in, wait for it, Pinellas County, Florida. Yeah, there you yeah. go, Pinellas, second time this year. Nerdin and the victim were arguing when Nerdin became upset upon being told that he needed an erectile dysfunction medication to address his sexual shortcomings. Mm, I'm pretty sure it wasn't worded. You off. It wasn't worded like that. Nerdin then took the dildo and shoved it into the 37-year-old victim's mouth. Whoa. The, the woman also told police that Nerdin punched her in the left eye while she tried to punch, push him off. After being read his rights, Nerdin claimed not to remember using dildo as a weapon, <laughs> but, re- right, but recalled that the victim had punched him in the right eye during the altercation. Arrested for domestic battery, Nerdin was booked into the jail, blah, blah, blah. And Nerdin, who has an extensive rap sheet, was released from the state prison four months ago after serving more than 13 years for armed robbery, ag assault, and fel- um, felon in possession of a firearm. But you, but he wasn't armed with a dildo. No, at, it, at that the, point. And actually, y'all, the head, the title for this one, which I skipped, is "Ex-Con Busted for New Year's Day Dildo Battery." Woman told man he had a limp dick and required Viagra. Viagra. <laughs> well, wow. and and the crazy thing about that is when the cops asked him about you know battering her with the dildo, he said, "I, I didn't shove it. I didn't yeah, do that. I, I don't remember that." Yeah. So I doubt she's going to make up a story and say he that, shoved a dildo down, down my, my mouth. Throat, yeah. You know what I mean? Like she got to be telling chip the chip truth. Teeth. Well, that's when you say entertaining courtrooms. That would be an entertaining one to sit yeah. through when that thing finally gets into yeah. a yeah. Yeah, um, I sure is entertaining for the uniform patrol that showed up. So. Oh yeah, and and I saw the report. The you know a lot of these I'll see the reports, the actual police reports right, right. that they fill out and turn in. Yeah, it's. I mean, it covers everything you just covered, right. but it's pretty crazy yeah. that I'm thinking, what are these officers thinking while they're right. taking this yeah. report? Uh, he took the dildo and shoved yeah, it right they, down they, my they're mouth. Trying, they're trying not to laugh. And, yeah. Uh, I want to make sure that dildo stays in that evidence room. And right. And you yeah. Yeah. Give it yeah. pad tracks. Yeah. Make yeah. sure they got pad tracks. You don't want to, you don't want to come up missing. Mm-hmm. They call oh, it wow. dill, dill tracks is yeah. what they call it there. All right. I'm going to ask you before you play dumb criminals. Okay. Are we actually going to have a dumb criminal? We're actually going to have a dumb criminal. Not a, not a game. Not a game. Last two episodes in a row. <laughs> it was dumb criminals, I was, but it was games. I was backed up with games from the holidays from when I was sick. Okay. I did All nothing right. but think of ways to torture you guys with All games. All right, so let's get a real dumb criminal. Oh, we have a real dumb criminal. Angel. 
It was a pretty unnerving event when a young boy in Toluca Lake, California, my Toluca, former Toluca. stomping ground, came downstairs on Christmas Eve and found a 44-year-old stranger sitting in his dad's recliner in the family living room. Hey, was it Santa Claus? The unwelcome <laughs> visitor, Joe Candido, who oh. is described as high on bath salts, yep. oh, shit. had broken into the home, but fortunately... He didn't mean any harm. What he actually did was put up Christmas decorations and lounge around. He lit candles. He hung a wreath. Mm. And then he kicked back and watched some TV Christmas movies. The young boy thanked Joe for putting up the decorations around the house and called his mother, who was next door visiting with a neighbor at the time. He said, Mom, I don't want you to worry, but there's a man here and we're (laughs) watching TV. His name is Joe and he's really nice. Upon hearing the call the boy made to his mom, Joe turned to the boy and said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I'll get my things and go. Unfortunately for Joe, the cops are pretty responsive in this area, and they caught up with him on the sidewalk just a few houses down. And apparently Joe was homeless and just looking for some holiday cheer. And And instead he gets a nice serenade of banjos definitely look before we banjo that though those those bass salts will make you do some crazy stuff uh my story read a lot of crime on original life real crime mr nice guy Mm. cut the baby out of the mama's Mm. stomach and slashed her throat i had never heard of that until the the story you did like a, a few weeks back uh is this any bad i mean what well it, 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 it look it says clearly on there um not for human consumption, but they sell it as as, as synthetic marijuana. But it, they sell it as potpourri, and some people makes flip out, and some people get high off of it. Mm. I mean, some people, I mean, they like, like murdering. I mean, high. he he called down a lot of people kill people. He called down on one. Well, Joe got a nice high. Apparently, I, I smoke. I just and I don't feel right, and the whole thing is on the nine one one. The whole incident. Mm. Wow. Yeah, crazy. I heard that. Don't be in the hey, hey, Ian, oh, did, did you no, finish the banjos? Oh, a little extra boost little there because he gave mm-hmm. the, an actual dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. I, I want to say some um, real life, real crime original now dropping on Saturdays. Let's tune in. Is that permanent? I don't know. They, they, I, I always. When I started, it always used to drop it on Saturdays. I, I mean, I mean, I'm just asking. I have to have a board meeting. I, 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 the only reason I changed that is because um, I heart said it, to do it on a Tuesday. But anyway, so back to it, y'all. Listen, this Saturday. Well, we then, Mike, if Mike hears that, he'll say, "Do it on Saturday." Right. right. <laughs> We've got an investigative crime guru, a, a, a legend, a multi award winning investigative reporter. And a dear friend of ours, um, Karen Chawla, uh, coming on. And that's going to be this Saturday's episode. And, and convicts, patrons, Apple subscribers, you'll get it first, naturally. But y'all got to listen to it. It's going to be fire. Yep. And and she's she's just. She's, she's a, the real she's deal. She's a pistol and a real deal. And I've known her since I was back. Starting her own podcast, Louisiana yeah. really? Unfiltered. Yeah. Well, it's going to be it's, love. So y'all tune in and listen to it. Um you never know what's going to be said, and especially right. between me and her. Yeah. All right. All right. Stay tuned for that. Any- and, and thanks uh, for liking and listening and sharing. We love and appreciate each and every one of y'all. Thank you to our sponsors. And, um, you know, I was thinking about this morning about Roy and, and the two Christians. The, and we, they, they have multiple business, right? Parish Forensics and, and Louisiana Pet Crematory. Louisiana and I was really thinking, I hope, I hope lifers – and it's sad to say, but I hope lifers use the the pet crematory more than they have need to use parish forensics. Yeah, cut. But parish forensics is the only place in the state of Louisiana that you can get an independent autopsy done if needed. That's yes. right. Hopefully, you don't need it. Yes, it is. A uh, little shout out to my son. Happy nineteenth birthday yeah, to the birthday. lawman. Yeah. Uh, also, five of you have uh, shirts coming out to you. Uh, on uh, 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 dumb criminal shirts coming for winning the uh, online contest about uh, uh, the 
villains from 2023. So cool. I got to get those it's out. Jim it's on Zion, What if they don't want hey. dumb criminal shirts? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they beat our ass on the villains. I think thing it's sanctioned it that you want me to pay for them, so <laughs> you probably should go ahead with that. Oh Lord! Uh, I just want to, th- you know, thank Ian Zaring for standing up standing and up I, a real and, man, and Ian, and Ian, both of them, yeah, both, both Ian and Ian. He's Ian after dark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he might be peeing after dark. Yeah, you know? that's right. And, but anyway. I said that's all I got. Maybe what's his name can get a can get that uh, biker and iron in the ring for a for a little UFC matchup. That would be yeah. yeah. Hey, and go. y'all Look make sure that. Uh, on that original episode tomorrow that you share it, and I know Karen's going to share it everywhere. Uh, fire, fire, fire! Yep, uh, product of Jim's imagination. All right, until next time, I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Overton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Your host of Real Life, Real Crime Daily. Peace. Peace. Aglets.